today, we're exploring Wubuntu, which according to the developer is an Ubuntu-based OS that replicates Windows 11 functionality and is compatible with Windows applications. As an old school Lindos fan, certainly piqued my curiosity. And today, we're gonna install it on an old MacBook Pro. This isn't gonna be cursed at all, so stay tuned. And if you enjoy old computers, strange operating systems, and the fine line between intellectual property and parody, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. So I only discovered Wubuntu pretty recently, and I'm not gonna lie, I was initially drawn in by just how delightful it is to say the name, Wubuntu. And the fact that it seems like a modern day spiritual successor to my favorite weird Linux from the early 2000s, Lindos. You know, the weird Linux distro that Walmart included with their super cheap PCs back in the day. The main Lindos selling point was that it gave compatibility with Windows applications while running on an easy to use and inexpensive Linux base. Well, Wubuntu seems to have pretty much the same philosophy. Advertising on the site that you can run all of your favorite Windows EXEs, though they take it a step further replicating much of the Windows 11 user interface through a really rather detailed KDE Plasma customization. Oh, and real quick, this is Action Retro, not Action knows anything about copyright law, so I have no idea about Ubuntu's use of Windows UI graphics and icons, or their use of the name Ubuntu. In fact, there's actually a fair bit of controversy around Wubuntu. And coincidentally, as I was filming this video, Michael MJD released a video on Wubuntu where he covered a lot of that controversy in depth. So I will link that video down in the description below. Definitely check that out before you decide to give Wubuntu a try for yourself. But we're gonna give Wubuntu a try as it's presented and see if it lives up to its own hype. And I have the perfect machine to try this out on, a Core i7 early 2011 MacBook Pro. A Mac running Linux that looks like Windows 11. We'll see how easy it is to install, and then I think it would be fun to try a couple of experiments. We'll put it next to a computer running real Windows 11 and approach it as it's intended, as a Windows user making the switch to Ubuntu and trying to use it like good old Windows. Right after this quick word about today's sponsor, Clean My Mac X. If I had to describe my computer in one word, it would be absolute wasteland of a mess. Because I import 4K video files all willy nilly, copying them to multiple projects without removing the originals, and you better believe that I'm always running out of space. Enter Clean My Mac X. Trusted since 2008 and downloaded over 30 million times in 185 countries and counting, including one user in Antarctica. It's just a one button press to keep your computer clean and fast, even if you're pressed for time. Smart Scan cleans up, removes malware, and can speed up even the slowest Mac in about two minutes. Space Lens lets you see what files take up space on your drive, and protection modules, Malware removal powered by the Moonlock engine can scan your Mac for crypto miners, viruses, adware, and remove them instantly. So if you're an absolute digital mess like I am, embrace your creative process, embrace the mess, and let Clean My Mac X clean the rest. And right now, Clean My Mac X will handle the mess with a seven day free trial and use my promo code for 20% off. Check out the link and code down in my description below. So this is my trusty early 2011 13-inch MacBook Pro, and despite being like 13 years old as of the filming of this video, it's still a very nice machine. It has a 2.7 gigahertz Core i7 Sandy Bridge. I've upped it to 16 gigs of RAM. It has HD Graphics 3000 from Intel with 512 megs. Not too shabby, honestly. And as you can pick up these wonderful old machines for very little these days, it's a great test bed for weird stuff like strange operating systems. And we'll just try the default option here. Select operating system, Windows Ubuntu, 
11. And look at that, immediately greeted with the Windows 11 startup splash screen here. Loading in with the KDE mouse cursor, which immediately turns into the Windows mouse cursor. <laughs> and look at this. Oh boy, that really looks like Windows. <laughs> Let's just go straight to the install and then while this installs, we'll talk a little bit about what exactly Wubuntu claims to be. Now, according to the developers, Wubuntu is Linux with Windows look and feel and tools and includes the new Copilot wizard, unfortunately, Edge, OneDrive, PowerShell, Teams, and etc. but does not require TPM Secure Boot or any other hardware requirements, okay? Sounds pretty good, like a modern day Lindos, which I love. Now there is a bit of another thing here in that Ubuntu is free, but there is a professional version that they're selling. And in order to get all the features, you have to buy a $35 professional key. So that in of itself might be a bit controversial to some, but in the interest of doing a proper terrible review of this, I have indeed paid them $35. All right, well, install complete. <laughs> Let's uh, restart into our new Wubuntu installation. Ubuntu, gonna run Wubuntu. But look at this, is this what Windows 11's login prompt looks like? I think it's time for our first experiment. Here is a Lenovo ThinkPad X230 running actual Windows 11. And yeah, the login screen does look a little bit different. Honestly, I kind of like Windows Ubuntu's login screen better, but let's log into both machines and see how the experiences compare. All right, well, Windows Ubuntu decided to open a bunch of stuff immediately. Let's close that. <laughs> Honestly, they did a, a pretty great job of making Ubuntu with KDE look like Windows 11. I mean, there are some differences, of course. I mean, if we get real nitpicky, Windows Ubuntu has icons horizontal, Windows 11 has them vertically. The icon positioning is a little bit different, of course. The status bars look slightly different, but still very close. I would wager to say that if you showed Windows Ubuntu 11 to a not computer person who has used Windows 11 before, they would think it is Windows 11. All right, let's compare the start menus. Wow, very similar. <laughs> Great job. Honestly, I kind of prefer what they did with Wubuntu on the start menu versus Windows 11. I like the blue line under the search bar, but the icons, pinned icons look the same. I mean, great job Ubuntu people. <laughs> this looks shockingly, surprisingly good. And we can see we have a lot of the same apps here like Microsoft Edge, which uh, yeah, they have a Linux version of Edge. So it's not running in any kind of emulation or compatibility layer. It's running actual Linux Microsoft Edge. So let's compare the two. Of course, Microsoft Edge wants to nag you about a bunch of stuff. Windows 11 is asking a lot more questions than Ubuntu is. <laughs> Confirm and start browsing. Oh my God, come on. Get rewarded for searching in Microsoft Edge. Come on. And Microsoft Edge crashed on Windows 11. <laughs> that does not bode well. All right, let's go to Google on Linux. Uh, I am slightly concerned that I'm having a better Microsoft Edge experience on Ubuntu Linux <laughs> versus actual Windows 11. Okay, so after paying, I received an email with an activation code that says it's good for one computer. So I'm going to go ahead and enter it now, which I believe is under system settings. Okay, here's where we enter our product key. Yeah, we are registered 
and activated. Uh, system has been activated. All features have been released. Okay. You know, I think the feature they replicated the most from Windows is how locked down the registration is. <laughs> it is surprisingly a Windows-like experience. Okay, now what I'm really interested in is how well does this actually run Windows applications or even DOS applications? This is using Wine, of course, as the compatibility layer. Of course, Wine is free software, so you could install it on any old Linux distro, but maybe the whole package together here with the Windows style interface really makes it worth it. Let's pop in something from Windows and see. I'm gonna start with something that should be pretty easy for it. This is the original install disk for Driver, an old Windows game. But I'm curious what happens if, like a novice Windows user, we expect this to work like Windows and just pop the CD in. All right, it's asking us to mount and open the CD-ROM. That's a good sign. Let's try to actually run driver setup. Yeah, launching right into Wine. I mean, for a Windows novice user, this isn't exactly the simple experience of starting the setup program because Wine has to do a bunch of rigmarole to get ready to run Windows stuff. Ah, but there we go, launch the driver setup application. All right, I kind of came into this video expecting Ubuntu to be as slapdash as Lindos was, but the whole experience here is actually surprisingly good. Value is another question, but using this, very surprised. All right, run driver. Now it crashed. All right, installing Half-Life 2 should be interesting because it's also gonna install a very old version of Steam. So I'm curious what's gonna happen with this more complicated install. Yeah, Steam Installation Wizard. All right, well, Half-Life 2 installer doesn't wanna work. But hey, you're not installing Wubuntu to play a bunch of old games. You wanna do serious business like Photoshop. CS2. All right, well, the installer seems to load. Okay, well, I guess the install has finished because hilariously it says finish, 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 finish. And I'll click on finish, finish, fin finish, the middle finish. They all say finish. <laughs> all right, let's see if Photoshop is in the start menu. It is with the correct icons, that's good. All right, and we do apparently have Photoshop. Let's try to, oh my God, stop asking me things. <laughs> Let's try to start a new document here. Yeah, I mean, there it is. It's Photoshop. Of course, this isn't so much a triumph of Wubuntu as it is a testament to how good wine is. Now look, closing Photoshop gives us a C++ runtime error. Nice. So, Wubuntu. Would I personally recommend this? Absolutely not. In fact, I can't see any kind of real world use case for this operating system. And even looking beyond the potential IP issues and uh, the security issues, which definitely you should not look beyond those, I ran into trouble just trying to do what this advertised to be good at. Running random Windows applications. Couldn't install Half-Life 2, the installer froze, and driver would not launch. If you need a dead simple Linux install that runs Windows applications, just install Ubuntu and Wine. They're free. So as interesting as I personally find this and as well done as the Windows 11 interface is, yeah, I don't think there's any reason to give this a try outside of just straight curiosity and probably shouldn't be your daily driver. In any event, if you enjoyed this adventure, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching.
And a special thanks to Graham, Drew Hamlin, James Laurie, George Rosansky, Jesse Azell, Matthew Crowell, April White, James Fryman, Andrew Nicholson, Scott Cedarbaum, Frodo Jedi, Lyle Truid, Unknown Soldier 41, Tom Woodfin, Alex Hoffman, Veronica Explains, Paul Spencer, Control Alt Reese, Ryan, Chris Biggs, Jason Papez, Scott Thompson, Camel Rakowski, Chris Nelson, Greg from Rock K Mods, Chris Calderon, and Gaspar Heller, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.